Ever wonder why simply reading your notes isn't enough for effective studying? Well, let's unlock the power of a fascinating learning strategy, elaborative interrogation. Elaborative interrogation is a key concept widely explored by memory researchers. It's a broad term, but at its core, elaborative interrogation involves adding details to our memories, enhancing our understanding and recall. So think about elaborative interrogation or elaboration as enhancing your memory with extra features. It's not just about storing information, but about connecting and integrating new ideas with what you already know. This integration makes recalling new information easier, as it's linked to our existing knowledge. Elaboration also means engaging with information on a deeper level. So instead of just focusing on surface details, we ask how and why questions to deepen understanding about meaning and context of the information. This deeper processing is what really embeds the information in our memory. Now, many memory researchers regard elaboration as a highly effective way to boost learning and memory, but applying elaboration in educational settings can be challenging due to its broad nature. It's a concept that can encompass almost anything related to memory enhancement, which sometimes makes it practical use in education a bit tricky. Despite these challenges, here's how you can use it in your study routine. For example, imagine you have an assignment about understanding volcanoes. First, start with the basic questions. Begin by asking foundational questions like, what causes a volcano to form? Or how are different types of volcanoes classified? Second, you dive into your study materials or online resources and you might discover that volcanoes form at tectonic plate boundaries due to the movement of the Earth's crust and that these volcanoes are classified into types based on shape, size, and eruption style. Now, once you've grasped the basics, you can now dive into more complex inquiries. Ask, why do some volcanoes erupt explosively while others have gentle lava flows? Or how do volcanic eruptions impact climate and the environment? For instance, what are the short-term and long-term effects of a volcanic eruption on nearby communities? Or how have volcanic eruptions shaped the Earth's surface and ecosystems over time? Another deeper question would be to reflect on historical volcanic eruptions, like Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, or Mount St. Helen in 1980. Ask how did these eruptions impact human history and our understanding of volcanoes? Of course, you should consider how current volcanic activity is monitored and managed. Ask questions like, how do modern technologies help in predicting volcanic eruptions? Or what measures are in place to protect communities living near volcanoes? Finally, think about how the study volcanoes intersect with other geographic and scientific disciplines. For example, how does the study of volcanoes contribute to our understanding of plate tectonics and the Earth's interior? By engaging in elaborative interrogation, you're not just learning about volcanoes in isolation. You're exploring their formation, types, impacts on the environment and human society, and their significance in the broader context of Earth sciences. This approach helps deepen your understanding of the topic, making it more meaningful and memorable. If you're liking this video, it'll go a long way if you can like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Closely related to elaborative interrogation is self-explanation. This method has been particularly studied in subjects like math and physics. It involves students explaining the steps they take while solving problems, and this can be done by yourself or with other people. Here's how to use it. First, choose a problem or concept. Suppose you're working on a math problem involving quadratic equations. As you solve the equation, articulate each step. For example, first, I'm setting the equation to zero to find the roots. Now I'm using the quadratic formula to solve for x. Next, clarify the reasoning. Explain why each step is necessary. I set the equation to zero because the roots of the equation are the x values where the graph intersects the x-axis. Next, connect this problem to larger mathematical principles. Understanding the quadratic equations is crucial because they model many real-world scenarios like projectile motion. And finally, try explaining the concept or your solution to someone else, or even pretend you're teaching an imaginary class. 
This reinforces your understanding and highlights areas where you might need clarification. Now here are some practical tips for both techniques. First, consider regular practice. You can incorporate these techniques into your regular study sessions. The more you practice, the more natural they become. Second, you can use visual aids. Diagrams, flowcharts, or mind maps can help in visualizing connections and processes. Third, try a study group. Discussing and explaining concepts to peers can enhance understanding and reveal new perspectives. Of course, you can do this by yourself, but study groups are even more helpful. And lastly, reflective journaling. After studying, write down a summary of what you've learned and how it connects to your existing knowledge. If you're interested in other study practices, take a look at the other videos. By actively engaging with the material through elaborative interrogation and self-explanation, you're not just memorizing information, you're building a deeper understanding and creating a robust framework for long-term retention and application. This approach is particularly effective because it transforms passive reading into an active learning experience, making the study process more engaging and effective. Thanks for watching.